Praise the Lord. Good morning. This is a day the Lord's made. Amen. Any place uh, you'd rather be than right here in the house of the Lord? Amen. Well, praise God. Heaven might be an option, you know, that'd be, be a nice place to be this morning. But uh, since we're not there, I'd rather be here. Hallelujah. I hope that you've had a great week and you, you're walking in the blessings of the Lord. Uh, the power of his spirit has been working in and through you this week. Good to see your smiling faces. Uh, boy, we got a lot of people missing today. Uh, but that's the way it goes. If anybody wants to move closer to the front, it's legal, okay? <laughs> you, can, you, you can do that. Uh, okay. <laughs> Maybe when they shake hands. <laughs> get, I gave you your opportunity, so praise the Lord. We're going to uh, offer to you the table of the Lord this morning in, in communion. We're going to bless the elements. We'll move the table back to the double doors at any time during the service. Whether it's during the singing or the preaching, whatever's going on, it really doesn't matter. Whenever you feel like now's the right time for me to go take communion, I want you to do that. It's a, it's a private time between you and the Lord. Just let him speak to your heart. If there's anything you need to get off, as they say, off of your chest, uh, off of your heart, and ask him to, to forgive you and, and deal with you in those areas. For those of you who are, uh, who are joining us on the stream this morning, we welcome you wherever you are around the world. The Lord bless you. And we invite you to join us as well uh, in the communion time. While you may not have a fancy communion set like we do, whatever you have available, just sanctify it. Just sanctify it. And uh, thank, thank the Lord for what he has done for you. For the sacrifice that he made on the cross, the blood that was poured out and the body that was broken, torn for you. Let's bless the elements. With this cup, 
I remember thee And the blood that was shed for me And this bread we break and eat Bowing broken-hearted at your feet we remember we remember we remember we remember we We remain. Lord, we come to your table according to your word. You said as often as we do this, do it in remembrance of you. And, and Lord, that's what we do today. We remember what you have done for us on the cross. Thank you for the salvation that you provided for our souls for the healing of our bodies. I pray, Father, for each one who comes to your table today, whether in this sanctuary or at home, I pray, God, that you would meet them, speak to their heart. Lord, I pray that all sin would be forgiven. Heal those who are sick in their body. Let the life that was in Christ Jesus be in them in Jesus name Lord now we dedicate this service to you and I pray that everything we say and do will be for your glory and that when we leave this house we can all say it has been good to be in the house of the Lord we love you Lord teach us in this service how to love you more and we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall but you have never failed me yet. Waiting for change to come, knowing the battle's won. For you have never failed me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet.
never fails me say this because it's just burning in my heart. Can you put yourself in the place of the Israelites who are marching around the walls of Jericho? And just imagine marching all the way around the city for seven days and not even knowing what was going to happen. You're just doing because Joshua said so. And you just keep marching around the walls and thinking, okay, <laughs> what's happening here? Nothing. Nothing's happening here. And then they had to march seven times around the seventh day without saying a word. How many women were in there? I don't know. <laughs> but I'm just thinking about the situation of walking around those walls for seven days and then seven times the last day seeing nothing happen. But God didn't fail. When we obey him, he doesn't fail. Just do what he tells you to do and see his hand move. We'll see him do it again. Hallelujah. There is none like you. No one else could touch my heart like you do. I could search for all eternity long and find there.
it overtakes my soul, my heart, and the flesh.
we first queen We search for you In a dry and barren land We're longing for your hand To guide us to A place where you Can cleanse us with your rain Baptize us once again We thirst for you.
There's an old chorus that we used to do, haven't done it in years. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. How many of you remember that? Hi, Cindy, you snuck in on me. Let's do that. There's a sweet, sweet spirit. Just stay. good, isn't he? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We appreciate the presence of the Lord in the service this morning. You can be seated if you like. 
Praise the Lord. Uh, John, would you help me please? Uh, we want to receive the tithe and offering at this time. If, uh, if John would help me. I started to do that myself, John, but I didn't. There are some announcements I think that uh, we need to re remind ourselves of. Uh, okay, we're beyond that one. <laughs> the Women's Conference uh, is coming up on July the 30th in Monahans. If you'd like to go see Sister Redmond, there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. Or it will be there. Okay, if you want to go to the ladies' meeting in Monahans, just see my wife. We don't, we don't need us. We don't need no sign-up sheet. What else we got going? I can't read that. What's it? Ah, the Pleasant Hills Children's Home. That's what that big blue barrel is uh, in the foyer. We do this every year. It's, uh, what was it called? Pylon. It's uh, Pylon Month. Uh, the Children's Home... Uh, Right now, I think they have around 30 or 40 kids there that they're taking care of. Um, children who uh, are there for many, for various reasons, but we, we supply them. Uh, well, we join other Assemblies of God churches uh, for this month, and we supply everything that uh, those kids need, from medical supplies to school supplies. There's, is there a... Uh, a list on the table. Okay, on the foyer table, there's a list of everything that you can buy. But if, if you want to go another route, just give an offering. We'll receive that as well. And uh, yeah, it has to be, if you write a check, memo at uh, Pleasant Hills Children's Home or PHCH. Okay, is there any, any more announcements here? Yes, we are uh, still in the book of Hebrews. Uh, probably be there when the rapture takes place. But uh, we're, we're studying, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of heavy. It's kind of deep. So when you come, you have to be willing to engage the brain. Okay? Let's see. What else do we have? I'll... Uh, I'll mention that in just a moment. Is that the last one? Okay, thank you. John, if, uh, is anyone else, that, did we skip anyone? Would you please extend your priestly hands of blessings toward the gifts? Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you uh, for those who have participated in this building and those at home who uh, support this ministry faithfully. Lord, I just ask a blessing upon every one of them. Accept our gifts. They're from our heart. Lord, we don't bring it because we have to. We bring it because we want to, because we love your church, we love your kingdom, and we want to see men and women, boys and girls, saved. Lord, bless now the offering in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Uh, you might want to go with John. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, there was uh, an announcement there, a, a, a Jesus DVD. And you'll see out on the table a basket uh, with these uh, DVDs in it. These are free. Uh, some company, in an attempt to, uh, to evangelize the world, sent me a case of these things, along with other churches. We're not the only church. Uh, but they are free. And if you'd like to take them and give them away, please do so. Take it as many as you like. Uh, let's see, it's three Jesus films on one DVD. That's what it says right here. The Life of Jesus, the most uh, widely distributed film in history, seen by billions worldwide. That's this video right here. And so uh, avail yourself of that opportunity. Sister Rue, I have something for you to take to, uh, to Marley. Last Sunday was a marvelous day because uh, Marley got baptized, and that is, uh, that is her certificate of baptism. Amen. All right, I'm going to switch to my head mic. I should be there. Boy.
boy, am I ever there. Yeah. I, uh, how many of you were here last Sunday? You may have wondered, because we had quite a bit of time left after we did the baptism, might have wondered why uh, I didn't preach, why there was no message. Well, I, I had a message to bring, but I thought under the circumstances and due to the people who were here, I thought it probably not the best message to bring. Uh, so uh, you just have to trust me that uh, I did the right thing last week and waited till today uh, to bring this message to you. I, uh, I always need the help of the Lord. It's Benny Hinn. Uh, I don't know if you follow him, don't know if you like him, love him, or don't know anything about him. It really doesn't matter, but he has uh, been in the ministry for so many years, and I remember him saying, and of course he has worldwide ministry, and he holds huge uh, crusades. Uh, tens of thousands of people will come to his crusades. And uh, before the service, when he is backstage or not, he is off stage. I, it, I say backstage, it sounds almost like theater production. It's not. It, before he comes onto the stage to begin ministry, he always said the same prayer. He said, Holy Spirit, if you don't go with me, I don't want to go. And I appreciated that about him, whether you know anything about his ministry or whether I, I agree or disagree with everything he says really doesn't matter. When he made that statement, Holy Spirit, if you don't go with me, I don't want to go. That really spoke to me, and I've remembered that for years. And I feel that way today and the message that I'm about to bring you. Holy Spirit, if you don't help me, I don't want to preach it. And I just pray your blessings, <clears throat> not only upon the word, because your blessing is already on your word. Uh, help us to hear what you're trying to say. Help us to be alert. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This, uh, this Thursday, I will be doing something that I love and hate. Have you ever been there? I, I have said for many years, I have a love-slash-hate relationship with ministry. There are parts about the ministry and about pastoring that I absolutely love. I've given my life to it. But in doing so, there are parts of the pastoral ministry that I hate, that I, I don't want to do, and I, things that I have to do, and I, don't, I just hate that, that part of the ministry. Um, I, uh, am be, I am preaching this, this, this Thursday to a group of preachers here, in the, and it's going to be here at our church. Sister Redmond and I will be doing the worship, uh, so pray for us. If you'd like to come, it's, uh, it's an open service. If, if you'd like to be here, anybody can come. It's uh, geared for the pastors and various ministries in the district, but you're certainly welcome. If you have a, if you have a Thursday morning free, uh, the service will begin at 1030, and I will be preaching. Now, what I, what I love about what's going to happen Thursday is I love to speak and to pour in some of my life into young ministers. That's, I just love that. Uh, or people who are thinking about going into the ministry. Uh, I paint a pretty picture, and then I paint a really ugly picture about the ministry. And I'm just very honest. Uh, most of my pastor friends don't understand, but if, I can, if you want to go into ministry and I can talk you out of it, you don't belong in the ministry. Amen. All right? So I'm going to be preaching to a group of preachers. They're not young preachers. They're not uh, learning how to do it. These, these are all seasoned pastors. Now, when you preach to seasoned pastors, 
They're sitting back there looking at you. Tell me something I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's quite an experience. You have never been there and you never will be there. But it is a challenge uh, to preach to seasoned pastors. And that's the part I'm hating about this. At the same time, two weeks ago, maybe even three weeks ago, the Lord gave me a message. And it has been, it's been in the oven now for two or three weeks. You know what I mean when I say it's been in the oven? I've been, it's in my spirit and it's baking so that Thursday morning comes and it's ready to come out. Uh, and it will be nourishment. But... Um, I've, I've been mulling this over and thinking, and the Lord has opened my eyes to some things. Uh, how many of you know that because we are human beings, most of us go through the same experiences? There are exceptions. Women go through childbirth that a man will never experience. Okay, so all of those obvious things we don't experience uh, as as a human race, but the common, the common things, and I've touched on them often. Uh, you walk into a room of your house and you forget why you went in there. Is that a common experience? Uh, where did I put my car keys? And you search. <laughs> you, now they don't have keys. They're they're called what? Fobs, key, key fobs, or, okay, where did I leave my key fob? So that is a common experience. So we have all these um, common experiences, and uh, these preachers have common experiences, and I'm going to be sharing some very common experiences that I can almost guarantee they have never considered. So I, if you're not here, remember 1030, pray for Pastor Redmond. All right, I appreciate that. In fact, I, uh, I'm going to be, Sister Cindy uh, brought this book to me the other day. It's, it's simply called Yes, Lord, by Harold Bredesen. Uh it's a, it's a very interesting book, and I'm, I'm enjoying reading it. And there is a passage that I'm going to bring to you in just a moment, the Lord willing. That I'm going to, I'm going to read it to you. In fact, the passage that I, that I will read here, I will read Thursday, only I will go in another direction with it, a pastor's direction. So we're going to get there in a minute. Okay, now, now I'm getting into the message for this morning. Does anyone remember who was here? Several years ago, on a Sunday morning service, now you're already saying several years ago, I can't remember what was preached two weeks ago. Several years ago, I brought to you an, ad, uh, an admonition, I admonished you to start watching the skies. Does anybody remember that? Raise your hand. Oh, you really do. Wow, cool. All is not lost. Somebody's listening. Start watching the skies. If you remember the context, I, I, I believe I shared at that time, I admonished you to watch the skies for unusual things, things that are out of the ordinary, appearances of one thing or another. Watch for phenomena taking place in the sky. And I admonished you in that area because 
Uh, there in these last days, there will be things transpiring in the skies above us that point to the coming of the Lord. Okay, you're going to be quiet. Okay. Uh, I remember years ago, a preacher, in fact, it was back in the 70s, a preacher up in Michigan said when he gets, he, he's a, he was a pastor, been, been pastoring for 50 years, and uh, he was talking to a bunch of us young preachers. He said, when I go to the pulpit, I look out over the congregation, and I just look at them, I see them as cabbage heads. And cabbages don't talk, so if you see them as cabbage heads, you don't expect them to say anything. So, now that, don't, don't be offended at that. It's just you have to understand that if if you're in a conversation and the person you're talking with never talks back, do, does it make you want to be somewhere else? Does that make sense? So that's uh okay. So um, you don't have to amen everything I say. Because a lot of stuff you just have to think about. But it would be helpful for me if, if you just say, uh-huh, once in a while. Uh-huh. So things are going to be happening in the sky. Phenomena is going to be taking place. I am watching that take place. I am fascinated by what is happening in the skies. Uh, I, I follow it almost every day. I am, I'm reading articles and watching things and totally, absolutely, positively unexplainable things that's happening in the skies above us and even in the atmosphere around us. And so I, I just want to remind you, just start watching the skies and you will probably see some things. that you said, oh, what's that? Where'd that come from? Where's, I don't understand that. So, so just watch the skies. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. You have to uh, re read the context. I'm starting at verse 29. It's toward the end of, the chap or the, uh, of that uh, chapter. Uh, but I'm not going to take this out of context because it stands by itself. If, if this was on a page, a blank page, and this is the only thing you read, it would stand alone. It's in context in chapter 29, and it's in a good context, but I'm using it because it does stand alone. Here it is. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. What I want you to underscore in your mind is the first part of that. The secret things belong to God. What he is saying is, God knows a bunch of stuff that he ain't going to tell us. Can I put it in that kind of vernacular? We all understand that language, don't we? He knows a lot of stuff that he ain't going to tell us. And we have a tendency as Christians to say, well, if it ain't in the Bible... It can't be true. <laughs> now, I'm not going to go. I, I have been places in the last several weeks in my mind and in my spirit. I've been to places I ain't going to share with you. Because you would call the guys come put me in a suit. 
haul me off. The secret things, the things that only he knows, they belong to God. But, conjunction, those things which are revealed, what has God revealed to us that belong to us? There it is. Did you know that God, there's a lot more to God than what is here? Amen. Oh, I love this book. I eat this book. I digest this book. I, I'm like the cow chewing the cud. I, I read it and I chew it and I swallow it and I bring it back up and I chew it some more. And it's, it's a word picture, Sister Carol. Everything God wants us to know about Him, His creation, His character, so everything He wants us to know is right there. Amen. But that doesn't mean everything He, he knows is there. That's right. The secret things belong to God. Just because you don't know what he knows doesn't make it false. Oh, I so much want to go someplace that you don't need to go. Uh, it's my job to watch over you as the shepherd of this church. Uh, it's, uh, uh, but there's some things, there's some things I, I need to know that you don't need to know. You, you may have to chew on that for a minute. How many times have you heard the word of God preached? You can't put a number on it, can you? No, I can't either. Let me uh, read this again. It's Harold Bredesen, simply titled, Yes, Lord. He was, uh, he was a heathen. As you read the first part of the book, he was, he was an unbeliever that wanted to go his own way. His dad wanted him to go in the ministry, and Harold said, Shoot, no, I don't want to do that. I want to be a diplomat. And so he was, he doesn't go into detail, but he leaves you the impression, and I think probably a correct impression, that he was pretty much a heathen until God got a hold of him. And uh, he was in college, in university, here in the States somewhere, I don't, can't remember where, but he went home, and his dad was uh, a Lutheran minister. And he went home and was in service where his dad was preaching. His dad had already accepted the fact that Harold wasn't going to go in the ministry like daddy wanted him to. It hurt dad, but he understood that and accepted Harold anyway. And so Harold comes home from his secular education and uh, is in service with his dad. I want you to listen to how he explains or describes some of that morning. Harold speaking. I walked slowly up to the old stone church and into the back, looking around for a pretty girl to sit next to and finding none, chose a seat in the last pew, where I might assume a prayerful attitude and take a nap. You're relating already. As the old hand-pumped organ wheezed out that last, the last strains of the pulpit hymn, my father ascended the wooden steps of the high pulpit, and there, under the ornate Victorian canopy, adjusted his glasses and announced his text, as he had done a hundred times before. 
He recounted for us the events following the death of Christ when he uh, appeared on the shores of Galilee and asked Peter, who had denied him, a single question. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? When my father repeated Christ's question the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Something happened to me. I sat up in the pew. My dreariness vanished. I felt electrified. Once more, my father slowly repeated the words, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And as he spoke, the pulpit, the pews, everything just disappeared. And a Jesus, totally different from the one I knew, stepped out of his word. And I saw him for the first time. I can't explain what happened. But in that moment, no one else existed for me. It was just the two of us. He was speaking to me, only to me. Harold, lovest thou me? There was no pointing finger, only outstretched arms. I started to say, no, you have just made me uncomfortable. But I could not finish the sentence. It was no longer true. I no longer felt uncomfortable, just exactly the opposite. Instead of condemnation, I felt total acceptance. I was overwhelmed by his love for me and by my love for him. I was beginning to see who he really was. Wow. All my plans and ambitions for my life fell aside. So this was Jesus. Lovely, so loving, so lovable. Yes, Lord, I do love you more than these, more than myself, more than anything. In that moment, I had but one desire, to give joy to the heart of Jesus. He goes on to describe what happened after that. But that struck me. A young man grew up in a preacher's home. And like all PKs, wanted to abandon that type of lifestyle. My son told me, and this is not hearsay, we were talking and he told me. He said, Dad, and I wanted Nathan to go into the ministry. I still think he missed it. But he said, Dad, I will never go into the ministry. Why? Because I've seen what they have done to you. And he saw some ugliness. How they treated their people treated his dad just because he was the pastor. He said, Dad, I will never go into the ministry because I've seen what they have done to you. I don't want it to happen to me. That is the life that Harold Bredesen was living. He doesn't talk about the stuff that uh, probably nominal pastors like Presbyterians and Lutherans and Baptists and Episcopalians, they probably don't get all the, the blowback and backlash that Pentecostal preachers get uh, because they're pretty, they're pretty much organized and they stay to a, a written uh, form of ministry and worship and stuff like that. But he, he saw enough that he did not want to go into the ministry. He just wanted to be secular. And he had sat under his dad's ministry for years. His dad asked him one day, Harold, do you love, do you love the Lord? Do you remember any of this, Cindy? Harold, do you, do you love the Lord? Harold said to himself, I, I've got to be honest with my dad. He said, no, dad, I don't. I don't love the Lord. 
He doesn't go into all the detail of why he didn't love the Lord, any of his experiences. It, it didn't go into any of that. He just answered frankly, no, Dad, I don't love the Lord. He went off into his secular education. But I got to thinking, there was something on that Sunday morning in that old stone church that happened that absolutely and for, I'm going to say eternity, changed Harold Bredesen's life. Do you imagine, or can you imagine, that in all the years that Harold said under his dad's ministry, his dad may have preached on that same text before? Simon, thou son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? I, I, I think that he probably heard that. But there came a time when Harold described it like this, when he heard the word that the Jesus he didn't know came out of the book and touched him. I got to wondering... Well, wondering in a way and, and know the answer to my wondering in another way. But, but I, I, I began to wonder how many people come to church every Sunday morning and they hear the word preached, but they never see the Jesus that's in the book. We have all had that experience when you have read that passage of Scripture a thousand times. But the last time you read it, something clicked. Yeah. Now you understood it. The Holy Spirit took away the veil and you saw something in that verse that you have never seen before. Is that a common experience? We... We as, as Christians, as church people, are so used to hearing the words of the book that we never see the Jesus of the book. And I was wondering, why, why do people even go to church? Is it to fulfill some religious obligation? To, to avoid some guilt? You know, especially people who were raised in church. and It's just the thing to do. And if I don't go, I will feel guilty. Compare that number of people that go for all the wrong reasons to the number of people who go to see the man of the book. Yes. To hear about the man of the book. Yes. The last thing on Harold Bredesen's mind that Sunday morning was to see Jesus. But Jesus climbed out of the book and into his heart. I don't know how that happens. I, I know the Holy Spirit works. It's his responsibility to do those kinds of things. But there's the other side of me that says, I don't understand how that works. And I'm going to ask you a very personal question. When was the last time you came to church and heard a message and the Jesus of the book came out for you? See, there was nothing different about his dad. If you've ever been in a Lutheran service, it's not quite the same as a Pentecostal service. 
oh, they're precious people. They'll, they have an assigned section of heaven. <laughs> there, there, there will be Lutherans and Presbyterians and Methodists and Baptists. There will even be some Catholics in heaven. I mean, it's, an, it's open. They'll be there. And Harold's daddy loved the Lord and preached the gospel all of his adult life. And I'm sure that there was nothing that daddy said that made Jesus come out of the book, but it was the words of the book. Do you hear what I'm saying? We go to church... And we are more captivated by the stylism of the preacher than we are the message of the book. I'm telling you some truth here. And I am as guilty as you are. I've been to churches where, boy, I'll be glad when this is over. The man was preaching the same gospel that I preached. But it was his style of delivery. Am I making sense? Amen. We need to get away from the mindset of, of all the trappings of the preaching of the word and just listen to the word and let the Jesus of that word come alive in us. No, I, I know, I'm, again, commonality, I'm just like you. Man, there are some preachers that I'd jump off the pew and say amen and clap my hands and, then there are some preachers, I don't, I'm not like that. Paul, I have wound up preaching to myself. Did you know that I had no intention of going here? This is not where I was going at all. Isn't that something? Do you think I miss God? What are you smiling about? I want to, it was in my heart to talk about different, a different thing here. I, I don't think I miss God. No. Something needs to happen in every one of us yeah. that makes Jesus come off the page. Yeah. Yeah. And we can have a new relationship with him. I remember that I remember when I got saved. It was at an old brush arbor meeting. You know what a brush arbor is? We had a top but there were no walls. The floor was sawdust and we had old wooden straight back pews. They weren't really pews, they were planks nailed together that we sat on. And I found myself under the ministry of the Happy Goodmans. It was in that very camp that Rusty Goodman got saved. And uh, my grandma was still alive, who was a Pentecostal preacher. I remember on that old sawdust floor, I knelt down and 
Uh, I helped spread the sawdust. All the young people of the churches would go out and help get the camp ready. And so I knew the sand fleas that were in the sawdust. But I knelt down and I cried myself into the kingdom. The next day I, I went out uh, Edwardsville, Kansas. I can, it's in my mind. I can see it as plain as day. I was by myself and I crossed over the old barbed wire fence onto property that I had no business being on. It belonged to a farmer. But I just wanted to be alone. So I left all of my friends and I jumped over that barbed wire fence and I went and I sat under a tree. I just sat on the ground under a tree and I began to look around. And I noticed as I, as I sat there, I've never really paid attention to the color of those flowers before. Boy, they were brilliant in color. I'd never seen that. And I looked up to the sky, and there were a whisk of white clouds, but the sky was blue, blue, blue. And I remember saying to myself, I've never seen that color blue before. And it made me so curious that I, I just started looking around at the wheat field I was setting in, and I the animals and every, everything about it. Even the old barbed wire fence looked different. And I got to wondering about that. And finally the Lord just dropped it in my heart. You're a new person. You've never seen that before. When you come to the Lord, the blues get bluer, the reds get redder, the greens get greener. You see things that have been there all your life, but you see them through brand new eyes because you are a brand new person. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to go back to that time when everything becomes brand new and we see the book newly and we see him in a new way. And we see the work of the body of Christ in a new way. We see everything about him in a new way because he came off of the book. Yes. Yes. Yes, wow. Redmond has some good preaching. <laughs> Thank you. Lord, I want everything to be new in my life. Yes, amen. I want to be like Harold Bredesen, and I want you to come off the pages one more time. Let me see you the way I never have. Yes. Lord, we've had a good relationship all these years, but... There's some refreshing that needs to take place. Let me see you with new eyes again. Lord, since you have led me in this direction, I have to believe that there are people listening, whether in this room or watching on the screen, that are really relating to what I'm saying or what you are saying through me. Lord, I cannot see all of this as just an accident or some rabbit that I have chased. Lord, I, I see this as, as, as your life trying to flow through. So would you, Lord, speak to the heart of every man and woman who is listening in this room and at home or wherever they are. Cause them, Lord, to be totally dissatisfied with their relationship with you. 
that will drive them into a new endeavor of seeking you. Come off of the pages for us, Lord. Come off of the pages in Jesus' name. Wow. Uh, you won't have to say it. I'll say it for you. Amen. Amen. Oh, wow. Thursday, I'm going to take this in another direction. Uh, again, I remind you, if you'd like to be here, it uh, starts at 1030. And some friendly faces would be appreciated. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm I'm through. That's the word. Did anybody hear anything I said today? You, you don't don't raise your hand because you feel obligated to. Okay, John will, but how many of you are going to start pursuing? a newness in your relationship with the Lord. Try to see him in a new way. Yeah? Good, good. Stand with me. Yeah, Clint? Yeah. Okay, uh, before we do... Yeah, exactly. Thank you for reminding me. Gerald and, and Juanel Pearson are in a very difficult place. Uh, without going into all the detail, uh, they will be moving uh, sometime soon to take care of her father. Uh, Gerald is, is not doing well. The, uh, uh, evidently, the Lasix that he's been on is not controlling the buildup of water in his body. So uh, it wasn't me, it was Lana that uh, Sister Wanell texted this morning asking for prayer. There's more detail there, but all you need to know is that your brother and sister in Christ are in a desperate place of need. I have been praying that those pins and Screws in one L's wrist will just dissolve and bone will be uh, renewed in that wrist. Praying for total deliverance for Gerald from the cancer and from the congestive heart failure that he is going through. Uh, but they are, they're pretty much in a desperate place. Have you ever been in a place of desperation? Yeah. yeah. Then you know where they are. So let's, uh, let's pray for them right now. Uh, in fact, this is what I'd like you to do. Just take hands with somebody standing next to you. Would you do that? <sighs> Hallelujah. Father, the, uh, the, this part of the body we call Abundant Life Worship Center comes before you right now. On behalf of our brothers and sisters in Christ, our brother Gerald and our sister Juanel. Lord, we're family. When they hurt, we hurt. When they rejoice, we rejoice. And so we bring them before you because we are hurting with them. And I just pray somehow, Lord, by your Holy Spirit, you would comfort their hearts all of the issues that they are dealing with right now. Father, I, I, I don't ask that you take them out of it, but give them the grace to go through it. Bring healing to both of their bodies. May they find in the midst of what looks like to be tragedy taking place, may they find joy in their spirit. A joy that is unexplainable. Be with them today. Gerald and Juanel, we love you with all of our hearts. 
And this body commits to praying for you. We have been and we will continue. I'm going to ask uh, David and Samson to come up here. They're, uh, these boys are headed to youth camp. Uh, David be looking for a new girlfriend. No. Oh, Mama said no. Okay. Boys, you better be looking for the Lord. Amen. You better be looking for the Lord. Right? I know your name. But it's just looking more like Samson to me all the time. <laughs> yeah. Extend your hands toward these guys. Father, we just lay hands on these young men and ask you, Lord, as they go to camp, first of all, that you give them a brand new experience in you. Take them where they've never been. Show them things they've never seen. Let them hear your voice that they've never heard. I pray that everything about their lives will be transformed and new. Let your anointing rest upon them. I pray, Father, for protection as they travel to and from the campsite. May they be, uh, may they be a source of strength for other kids who are there. Young people who, who don't have all the, all the stuff that they have. Lord, may they have hearts of compassion let them show your mercy to those kids that really need to see you. We send them out, Lord, with, uh, with our blessings. And again, we ask you, God, do something very special in their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, Clint. Okay, can everybody come up here? We're going to pray for Pastor and Dean. As the Lord has instructed for now on. You know, the, not really sure what the Lord is doing here, but he has instructed for prayer for our pastors, and um, we're going to continue doing that until the Lord says not to. So he's got something specific in mind, I believe, and uh, they need our strength to support and the Lord's strength to guide him. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for Pastor and Dean. Thank you for what you're doing with them through them, through their ministry. Lord, they uh, pray that you would strengthen them. Lord, open their minds to your visions that you have uh, as you instruct them how to lead the flock. Father, uh, we just pray for their bodies for healing. Uh, Thank you, Jesus. Of you, Lord, in them. Your Holy Spirit would just flow through them. Thank you, Lord. In their body to strengthen and lift Thank them up. You, Lord. Lord, as a congregation, Lord, we support yes. them and we lift them up. Yes. We, uh, we're here for them. and We thank you, Lord, for bringing them to us, for their faithfulness to uh, watch over us, Lord. As you have directed them, Lord, just uh, pray that you continue to direct each step that they take. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 You all just stay right where you are. Stay right let me. Make a hole, make a hole. I'm going to give you the pastoral blessing. All right? For those of you at home, stay where you are. This blessing is for you as well. Amen. Every head unbowed, that means it's up. Every eye unclosed, that means they're open. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the great shepherd of the church, whom I serve as the under-shepherd of this flock, I extend my priestly hands towards you, and I say be blessed. May the week that lies before you be filled with his power and his glory. 
May out of your bellies flow rivers of living water. From your hands a touch of healing for those who are sick and diseased. And from your lips words of hope for those who are hopeless. May the cities where you live be better places just because you live there. And may you be so filled with heaven that everywhere you go, you leave its residue. Amen. Amen. You have a blessed week. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Pray for these youngins going to camp. Remember the Pearsons. Pray for them. Amen. Appreciate you being here. Thank you for being with us on the stream. God love your heart. See you next Sunday. <laughs>